you know, when we talk about amazing, you know, there's, there's different. Greatly astounded, that's the great word there. It's in the New Testament. Amazed, <coughs> astonished, astounded, bewildered, dumbfounded, flabbergasted. Blow one's mind, there you go. Stupefied. Makes you stagger, stunned, moved, amazed. What amazes you? That I am a person of value and that I'm loved. I think that probably blows me away more than anything. Yeah, why, you know, why, why, would, why would God love us? I mean, that's, that's just amazing. And continue to love us. Someone else, that's good. Amaze. Someone else? Nature amazes me. Talk about that a little bit, it's good. Um, for me, like I've always I've always loved animals and, and the wild and um, just the the creation itself and the intricacy of what our world really is and that was created for us. There to bless us and to point us to him. Even, you know, it says that the rocks will cry out. It speaks, doesn't it? Yeah. That's, that's one of the reasons why, I mean, it's much better to bike outside than down in the basement. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I don't like to see the same thing. I like to say, wow, oh, that's beautiful. That's, you know, and you see different areas, <coughs> different things. It's startling. It's like, wow, this is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Anyone else? Development of a child. Um, the what now? Development of a little baby. Uh, just to, from, from birth to, you know, learning how to roll over, learning how to crawl, learning how to grab things. Um, just the whole. The whole process of it all amazes me because right now I, I take care of a little one and he's only eight or nine months old and he's just he's learning how to get across the room and you know and just exploring things and it just amazes me at how in the Bible it says God created us in our in our mother's womb and and, and just the the process of it all just amazes me how in some ways quickly they learn <laughs> and then you know and then I think as us adults why shouldn't we should be able to learn a little bit like they do <laughs> why does it take me there's so quite a bit of learning in those first <laughs> first number of years yeah from not being able to even lift one's head to being able to run and talk mm -hmm. And climb on roofs. <laughs> climb on roofs. So what do you think would amaze Jesus? What do you think? What do you think would amaze Jesus? I'm not saying come up with the, the answers that, that I saw in the New Testament. I mean, there are two different, Scripture records about two different times. What do you think would amaze him? And that was just a... Uh, Interesting passage. What would amaze Jesus? It's found in these two passages. Here's one in Matthew 8. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. Oh, when I was put under me, when I was put under the anesthesia, I went in there and they put the put the uh, oxygen under my nose. They, they just kind of said, hey, you'll just fade out of here. Uh, obviously I did because I woke up in a whole other room in another place. <laughs> Remember when, when I woke up, I said, that was a great sleep. <laughs> I mean, you did. I said, man, I felt good stuff. And what? <laughs> I said, wow, that was a great sleep. And then I thought about getting up and I moved a little bit and I said, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> but as they were putting me under, and I don't remember it because the people in the room told me later, you were beginning 
to talk and say how Jesus went to Capernaum. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I said a couple sentences, and then that was it. And I said, yeah, I just read it this morning. You, you, want, to know, you want to know what I read? <laughs> so we had to share with him about that. But anyway, I was talking about it, and I said, yeah, I read this morning. She said, well, it must have got in you. you know? <laughs> And, you know, that's encouraging. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. Now, a centurion was a soldier and, uh, and a Gentile. And he asked for help, says, Lord, my servant lies at home paralyzed. He's completely out. He can't move. Suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one to go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes, and I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. So this man knew. He was a, an officer. And he says, when I tell my guys to do certain things, they do it. And I know that you have another kind of authority, a spiritual type of authority, that when you say things, it happens. And you don't even need to come see my, my servant. Now, it was not accepted that a Jew would come into a Gentile's house. They would become unclean. But he said, I don't know if that really made a difference to him. He says, all you have to do is speak the word. So what this says to me is that the centurion knew Jesus. He understood Jesus. He saw who Jesus was. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. It made him stand back. He was confounded. He was amazed and said to him, truly I tell you, I've not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. The people of God, the people, the Jew, I haven't found any of the Jewish people that have this type of faith. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing their teeth. The Jews are the chosen people, but there are going to be Gentiles like you that's going to sit in the seat that, that was originally for them. And Jesus as they said to the centurion, go, let it be done just as you believe in life. And a servant was healed at that moment. Jesus was amazed about this man's faith. You have amazing faith. Second passage, Jesus was amazed. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Now, this is interesting. This is the same word again. Many who heard Jesus were amazed. I think they were amazed at the words that were coming out of his mouth, that such words can come out of his mouth. But that amazement didn't change them. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And are his sisters here with us? And they took, what does it say? They took offense at him. They made a judgment about Jesus. Who are you? You ever have, you ever have this that any people in your own family don't see the, the gift of God in you? Mm -hmm. have, are you ever open, a little more open to people that You've never seen or know. 
that somehow they can sometimes speak into your lives in a different way than the everyday folk? Because he went into his own hometown. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown, in his own town, among his relatives in his own hometown, in his own home. He could not do many miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. So on the one hand, what was Jesus amazed? He was amazed at the centurion's great faith. And he was amazed that these people, they lacked faith. He was amazed at their unbelief. You know, you, you would think that the people closest to you maybe would if you, are you ever a little more open to hearing somebody that doesn't know you? Have you ever gotten to that place? Are you a little more open to hearing something? But, but the people that know you and have been around you, sometimes we tune them out. That, that ever happened? What amazes Jesus? Faith or the lack of it. So it would be, be an interesting thing to think about in your life. What would Jesus be amazed about you? What are some positive things he would be amazed about? And what are maybe not so positive things that he would just like be confounded that you don't get? I, that, was a, that was a question that went through my head. But here are the different... Where did this man get these things? Where did this man get these things? That was, these are the questions. They had all sorts of questions that lead to a conclusion of unbelief and offense. I mean, he didn't go to seminary because the, the real rabbis back then had to go to the, the seminary that they, they would be taught the right ways. I mean, he, he's, a, he's not educated. Isn't this the carpenter? He's the carpenter. And what's this wisdom that's been given him? Isn't this Mary's son? And remember, this is the hometown where Joseph and Mary were. You know the rumors about Mary. They actually officially consummated their marriage after she probably looked already pregnant, you know. That's Mary's son. You know, we, we know who this is. She consummated until they corrected her. Oh, after? Yeah, they got, yeah. I mean, that's probably even worse, isn't it? But anyway. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Isn't this the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Shoot, we know it's... Have you ever had an older brother or an older sister that, that was ahead of you in school, and all of a sudden the teachers look at you, and they, they say, Oh, you're one of those. You're of the Hartzler clan or the whatever clan and you know you look like so and so and are you going to be like them and isn't this Joseph Judas what are these remarkable miracles he's performing and what did they do they took this information these aren't bad questions necessarily but they came with the wrong conclusion is it possible sometimes the way we look at life, the way we look at God, the way we interpret life, the way we see things. We may see things, but we've come to the wrong conclusions. And really, they hinder our faith instead of help our faith. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Jesus could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at the lack of faith. 
What does this passage tell us? 